couple of weeks ago. What was he saying here? He's trying to say something even as important as your eye. If it offends you and causes you to miss eternal life, better that you don't have but one eye. I'm saying this in this context. If mama and daddy reject you because of Christmas, and your first cousin, second cousin, and sisters and brothers don't want nothing to do with you because you don't believe in Christmas, better that you go without Uncle Johnny and Aunt Susie and all the rest of them and still have Jesus. We're talking about eternal life here. And brothers and sisters, this is not a plaything here. This is not something, oh, well, God, he knows my heart. God can only judge you according to how you follow his instructions. And if you are disobedient to the word of God, then you have proven by your life's testimony where you stand in the sight of God. You're going to be tried by fire. Turn to 1 Corinthians. You're going to be tried by fire. And these heathen festivals are certainly going to try those who, uh, who, who claim to know Jesus. I believe that's the third chapter, 1 Corinthians. Verse 13, you everyone have it. Every man's work shall be made manifest or made known for the day or that day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man work of what sort it is. In other words, the fire means the test and the trials that you go through. The test and the trials find out if you truly saved or not. A lot of times we go through various difficult situations in which we can't seem to get a handle on finances. Mm, look like I got to go and borrow some money from the church. Nothing wrong with that. That's what your church is for. And God does not identify with anyone who has pride. Now if you're too, pride, uh, too proud to say I don't have any food to eat then go on and fast when you ain't supposed to fast then. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying this in this context, a lot of people will go without basics because they have pride in them, are ashamed to ask for something. If you need a handout, praise God, ask for a handout from the church. That's what the church is for. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm saying, uh, and, and don't take a scripture out of context. Uh, these prosperity preachers are causing more people to go to the lake of fire than any single thing. Listen, church, there is no way God ever intended because you got saved, you're supposed to have a pocket full of $100 bills. That's a lie. God never saved a soul for them to have, as I said before, homes, new car, new shoes. That's not what God died for. God died for you to have a heavenly home. God died to save your soul. Now the scripture is tossed, not rightly divided. Uh, I never saw the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So therefore, if I have to ask for a favor from the church, have to ask for uh, uh, raise me a love offering, that means I'm begging. First of all, when the psalmist wrote this, he was talking about professional begging. They didn't have any type of welfare in those days, and it was talking about professional people whose life was to beg and they would have certain places in the market certain corners and they would hold their cup and they would literally beg that was their job now what the psalmist was saying that if you are right in the sight of God you won't have to be no professional beggar but that don't mean that you'll be in a position every now and then to need a helping hand the Bible says if you see your brother uh, have need uh, uh, don't hold the bowels of your compassion against him the Bible said, if you see your brother don't have a coat and you got two coats, give him one of yours. Does that mean because you got two coats and your brother don't have no coat that his faith is stronger than yours? No, it don't mean that at all. I've seen sisters, praise the Lord, who back when I came up as a child in a sanctified church, they prayed for children that were going through encephalitis and, and polio meningitis. I'm talking about diseases then that was incurable and see them get healed because they prayed and didn't have but maybe maybe had two dresses one they wore to church on Friday the other they wore on Sunday 
and the next Friday they wore that other Friday dress, and the next Sunday they wore the other Sunday dress. And sometimes they tried to fool the people with the Sunday dress on Friday and the Friday dress on Sunday. What am I saying? They didn't have a lot of clothes, but they had faith. They could get a prayer through. God is looking for somebody who can get a prayer through. Hallelujah. So, so don't get caught up in pride. Seek the Lord and understand God's giving. He said, I'll provide your need according to my riches and glory. And he will do just that. But God, hallelujah. If you work at McDonald's, thank the Lord. If you want a better job, pray. And God, through faith, he'll give you a better job. But don't ask to work for Bell Telephone making $100,000 a year and you graduated uh, with a sixth grade education. Praise God. Well, God can do anything. Yes, he can, but God does everything decently and in order. Hey, praise the Lord. Now, I'm saying this in this context. First of all, sometimes you pray and you, you pray amiss. You don't pray for a, a, a 19 or a, a 2002 Mercedes Benz. If you need transportation, Lord, I need transportation. Now, he might give you a 1977 Ford. But as long as it gets you to work and back, gets you to church and back, this is what counts. Hallelujah. But I pray for faith in God. Lord, keep me saved. Keep me holy. Keep my mind stayed on thee. Praise the Lord. While I'm on the job and going through, amen, all these things on the job situation and this one trying to slip me a phone number here and a phone number there and a wink here and you trying to live holy. Hallelujah. I heard a brother, he told me once, he said, you know, he passed since I got saved. He said, nobody ain't never asked me for a date. <laughs> he said, I got saved and look like every, every, every woman coming along on the job, she wants to slip me a phone number. What's wrong? I said, ain't nothing wrong. God is just trying to test you. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to hold your relationship with God through the storm and through the trials. Amen. So I'm saying this, church, that we have to understand that you cannot base your relationship on God with how much money you got in your pocket. Amen. Anybody can worship God when everything is going right. Have I said that before? Amen. But worship God and come to church and press your way and testify when you got fired from your job for no reason. Or he ran off and left you with four or five kids for no reason. And still press your way to church and say, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. I know. I know. I know about that old time religion. They had faith and would get a prayer through, but they didn't have too much in the material sense. But it's not about what you have in the material sense. See, Jesus said, the words I speak, they are what? Spirit and they are life. If you can't understand God through a spiritual understanding, and every time you think about Jesus, you think about what you can get in the material sense. You're a long ways from the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So try to develop spiritual understanding and a spiritual relationship with God. And then God will throw in everything else that you need. You'll throw in a car every now and then, a new pair of shoes every time. Hey Amen. Some have been praying for houses and was in apartments and had four, five, six kids, but did not God bless and give them houses? Oh, yes, he did. When did he do it? He did it when he got ready to do it. But they kept pressing their way to church, kept pressing their way. All of this I'm trying to show you that it's all about true worship. And when there's true worship, there is individual sacrifice. I said individual sacrifice. You can't live for somebody else. You can't worship God for somebody else. You have to find a relationship with God and plant your feet and not be moved from that relationship you have with God. Whether you get rejected by loved one, and if you don't never get invited over to no loved one's house because of Christmas, say thank you Jesus. I still got a mansion somewhere up in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, I want you to take note in John the eighth chapter. We're talking about now uh, the personal sacrifice to defend the faith. In the 8th chapter of John, let's pick up in verse 40. 
But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Now here we see the Pharisees have, 